Last year, I graduated with an electrical engineering degree and I got a first class degree. I got great grades and I managed to even get internships in AI, software, hardware engineering. I had a fabulous experience. I studied so much stuff. C, C++, the embedded world, Python, machine learning, control, electronics, communications, dot, dot, dot. I studied so much. But if I could go back in time and change two things about my mentality as an engineering student, I know exactly what they would be. And for this, I have two stories to outline the mistakes I made so that hopefully you do not make them. Please learn from my mistakes. So the first story is with the title of The C Coding Tragedy. The story starts when I enter my first year of university. It's COVID, I have a bunch of time, a bunch of time to study, and one of my modules that I take is, is software engineering and programming. And I remember very well that this module was in C, the C programming language. And I did a bit of Python before this, so I knew the basics of the data types, data structures, and a little bit of algorithms, so I wasn't completely discombobulated. I did really well in this class. I think I got 78% overall, and I remember it was like 50-50 exam and coursework, so I did amazing, I did great. I was very happy with my grades, and my confidence went up as a student. I was like, rah, I'm actually a serious student. And by the way, this was the first time I actually got high grades. Before university, I was I was not a serious candidate. <laughs> and I ride that confidence throughout the whole first year, which allows me to get good grades. I got an average of, I think, 72%, which was a really, really good grade, and I was super happy with it. The second year of university comes, and I'm seriously confident now. I have a nice backlog of proof that I can do the work and I can get the grades that I wanted. During that time, I realized that I think it would be good to get a job, to get an internship. And that's what I started to do. I started to apply for jobs. I had a CV. In my CV, I wrote, ha, huh, I can write code in C. At that time, I also did some electronics and I remember doing a bit of VHDL. So I put that on there. I put everything that I was doing in my modules. And I said that I knew how to do them. And eventually I got an interview. <laughs> and this is the funny part. My first ever interview in my life was with Intel as a hardware and FPGA engineer. Oh my gosh, this is like the dream role for an electrical engineering student. And me, instead of shitting bricks, I'm like, rah, come on, let's go. And I had obviously no idea how this process looks. I don't know what tech interviews look like, but I was confident. I got good grades. I under, I under, Surely I understand how to code in C and I know what VHDL is. I did it, I did at university and I got good grades. I go into my interview. I remember it was like an Eastern European Belarusian man. And he was like, hello, sir. Can you please um, write me this uh, C function that uh, adds two numbers together to, to, the, to, the, to the total? And I was like, oh, damn, we're writing C code. <sighs> And I remember thinking about it for a whole minute. I didn't know what to say. Until I eventually told him, I don't think I can do it in C. I can write the pseudocode. And I did, I wrote the pseudocode. I did what I could, but at that moment I realized I lied to myself. Richard Feynman is a very famous physicist and he has a very great quote that pretty much says, do not fool yourself as we are the easiest person to fool. I found out that day that I fooled myself. <laughs> More of the story, don't fool yourself as you are the easiest person to fool. How do you know you're not fooling yourself? That is a very, very difficult thing for a 19, 18, 20 year old to do. I hope you don't experience this. And to avoid this, just really test your own skills blank, nothing, just pen and paper. Write down what you know, challenge yourself, really, really challenge yourself. And I'm sure that you can do much better than me. But that's a really profound experience that I had. And it's an, it's an unfortunate opportunity that I missed due to 
me just being ignorant and being a clown. Okay, so we're getting to story two. Fast forward, end of second year of uni, I did actually manage to get an internship at a consultancy as a hardware engineer. And I enter that place and I have a fabulous time. Overall, the experience was invaluable. I learned so much about the things I liked, the things I disliked. I spoke to a lot of very intelligent people. I'm talking departments full of people with PhDs in machine learning and maths. And it was just incredible to talk to these people on a daily basis in the coffee shop or in the, in the, in the kitchenette and listening to the ideas, listening to how these people think. I obviously also worked on a bunch of cool stuff and I got to my final day and I remember asking my manager, hey, so am I getting a full-time offer back? And he was like, no, we, in our department, we don't do full-time offers, but you're, you're welcome to apply once you're back at university. I was like, but you know, like my, my, my friends who are also doing internships in other departments, they're, they're getting full-time offers back. And he was like, yeah, we, we don't do that in this department. I was like, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so I go back, I go back to uni. A few months later, I go on holiday, I go back to uni. And I'm like, okay, I, I, I'm in a good place. I'm in a good place. I, I got great grades. I have a fabulous internship, it, it, really good. I'm in a good spot. Surely I don't need to worry about applying for jobs at this very second. I just got here. I literally just finished the job. I'm not going to be firing up LinkedIn at this very second. And the weeks went by. I was studying. I was studying hard. I was doing well. I was really enjoying my degree. But the idea of work for the first few months or like September, October, November, December, they weren't in my head. And I also did really want to do well in my final academic year since it had the the largest amount of weighing to my total classification degree mark. So the rationale was there. You have to study in your final year. It has the biggest impact on your grade. Don't worry about jobs. I've got a good, good experience. I'll be okay. This was my rationale. And I'm here to tell you that that was a terrible, terrible idea, terrible rationale, terrible thought process. The reality is that my priorities were wrong and my idea of what was important was wrong. Months go by and I'm starting to think, hmm, now it's probably time to start looking for some jobs. Brush up my CV, apply here and there, here and there. Yeah, I send them through. And in my defense, I actually did manage to pull quite a few interviews. And during my time, I remember getting to a final stage twice during my university degree. But unfortunately, I got rejected from both. And there also became a moment where I even had an interview with, I remember, Amazon. And I was super excited. But it was on the day or the day before my final exam in communications, I remember. There was a bunch of really advanced electromagnetism in there and I had to study. And at that point, I had to reject that interview because I was like, I can't, I can't do both. And it's just the final, it's the final exam I have. And so I graduate without a job. So what happened? The reality is that my urgency wasn't there. I got comfortable. I thought everything was good. I, I'm good. I've got this. I've got that. I'm going to be okay. There was not enough urgency. And all of us are an Alex Gornick who had great grades, had great experience, graduated without a job what and all of a sudden i ended up in my parents basement literally underneath the stairs like harry potter so what happened right it's just complacency pressure wasn't on my shoulders so i was relaxed and that caused me to not make action soon enough everything ended up being okay after university after six months of unemployment I found an internship and it was a fab, it was an amazing experience and I, and I loved every single moment of it. And I also now landed a, a full-time role, which I've been working at. So everything worked out, but the reality was that my complacency cost me six months, cost me six months of, of just 
looking for jobs that's all that was going on that was my job looking for jobs and if you can't avoid that i recommend you do because it's an experience that i don't think is necessary if you can avoid it guys like if you can get a job straight after uni just do it put the effort in at the start and and yeah just put, put numbers in your favor put make the odds in your favor don't do what i did do not get complacent those were the two main pieces of advice i would give myself when i was a student don't get complacent and don't fool yourself don't get complacent and do not fool yourself that's me thank you very much for watching i'm alex and if you like the video please hit a sub hit a follow hit a hype hit a like mm, mm, mm. bye bye